Elsa, how do we actually take these pictures on Mars? Um, you know, it's, it's amazing, actually. We started two years ago. And if I could have the mosaic image number three, number three, please. It, it actually, from start to finish, to take a picture like this in the box is about two years. It's taken a core team of six people um, starting two years ago to plan, test, and execute um, over 5,000 command parameters that go into this image. Um, and we, we took it only three years after landing, which in Mars time, Mars mission time, is just a blink of an eye. You know, you land and we already have to execute it. So we had to start a long time ago. You know, it's um, funny because when you take a panorama like this on Mars, you're, you're thinking, oh, it's very technical, and it is, but it's in some ways the same as when you have your smartphone because what you need to do is you have to look in the right direction and you have to get the focus right. And that's really what we focus on um, when we're taking these images. We're millions of miles away though. Our selfie stick, if you will, is 150 million miles long. So when we take the pictures, we can't just go out and do it. And when we press the shutter button, hey, take a picture. It takes a day for the signal to get to Mars, and it takes another day before we get the images back. So we have that challenge of, of time and space, if you will. Um, so how do we how do we do that then? Um, we use our experience. Um, we've been doing this for a long time. We've actually been imaging um, for eight years with Curiosity with the mass cam, and that has led to uh, a ton of experience. We use our um, intuition, and then we have computer tools. And um, as we put all these things together, we, we make a draft, we test it, we get results, some of them work, some of them don't, and then we test again. So I wanted to um, introduce one of the most important tools that we've used in creating mosaics, which is the command visualization tool called Viewpoint. And it was developed by one of our team members, John Proton, and it provides us with um, a way to visualize as if we were on Mars, looking at the Mars images behind it and the computer uh, model of the rover, um, and then we can lay down footprints. Um, and that's a great way to pretend that we've that we're right there with Masscam, as you saw the pictures before. We're right there with Masscam taking the images, um, and be able to visualize that. So, if I could have the next picture, please. Thank you. You see here the frames. See all the red squares, the red rectangles. That's actually the footprints that we've laid down. Um, for this mosaic. And there's 142 total, like I mentioned before, there's fifth, over 5,000 commands for all together to take these 142 images that we stitched together. Now, in this case, we didn't land on Mars before we took this, right? We had to plan it in the blind. So we had to um, start with our information that we had available, which was from Curiosity. So two years ago, um, two of our ops engineers at the time, Jason Van Beek and Tex Kobachki, put together kind of a draft. And then um, that sequence we took into testing with the thermal vacuum chamber, um, which is house size. So imagine a small house that is in Mars conditions with the temperatures fluctuating about 100 degrees between day and night and also some of the air pumped out for vacuum. And we tested in there. And then um, we also got special permission to execute this um, sequence at Kennedy Space Center. And that was important because of the focus. Um, we could get the landscape pretty well from Curiosity, um, but we also needed information on how to focus on the various details of the per Perseverance rover deck because that's different than Curiosity. So uh, we got that in the bag, um, and thank goodness, because that's what allowed us to put the sequence together, all, all of it in, um, in one sequence. We sent it up two weeks before we actually landed on Mars. Um, we do that to ensure that, um, as a mitigation in case the communication errors right after we land, 
it was all fine. But just in case, we would have it on board already and ready to execute when we landed. So that's part of the, the thorough testing that we do um, when we're preparing to go to Mars. So as we got finally um, with all of that, we had our Cognizant engineer, Mike Kaplinger here at MSQ. We had ops engineers, Tex and Angela and Chris and myself, we checked and rechecked, and then we were ready to fly. So if I could have the next, the next uh, image, please. Here's how we laid out the panorama. You see how we start at the horizon? Where imagine being on the mast, you're looking one way and then looking next down the down we go as we take the panorama and building up tile by tile from the horizon and all the way down to the rover deck. 142 different frames. You can see we have focus on the hardware, on the landscape, and it's all put together into one sequence. So it's great to be here today. Our team is loving being on Mars. We're taking already hundreds and hundreds of images with this camera, and we're gonna take thousands, tens, if not hundreds of thousands in the future. We're so happy to be here from Mail and Space Science Systems and love working with Jim and ASU. Thank you for having us come along to Mars again. And uh, we just cannot wait to get going with this camera. Thank you.